Hey, what's up guys? So as you guys saw in the title of this video, this video is going to be a season prediction video for the 2018 to 2019 Chicago Bears. So in this video, I'll be going game by game, analyzing each matchup really briefly and just telling you who I think is going to win, who I think is going to lose, who I think is going to do well, and so on. Now also at the end of this video, I'm going to be doing a season awards prediction. So I'm going to be predicting who's going to be the MVP of the team this year, who I think is going to be the rookie of the year, and so forth. So I got to put a little disclaimer though before I start this video and that disclaimer is that I am a very huge Bears fan so uh, it's really hard for me not to be biased because you know I, I love the team and I want them to do good um, but I'm going to try to be as objective as possible I try not to put my um, you know Bears love in my predictions but uh, you know if I'm being too biased let me know in the comments down below. So let's get right into the video. So we begin this new Mad Nagy era in probably the most dramatic and the most exciting way you can possibly begin it. We're going to be going up against our most hated rivals on primetime football on the opening weekend of football as well. So there's just going to be so many people watching us. And if you're Mad Nagy, you cannot ask for a better stage to debut as a head coach. Like if you actually get a win here, you're going to be praised as a god the entire week in Chicago. And that's not even, you know, exaggerating. Like Bears fans are going to be crazy if we win this game. Now, as a Bears fan, I cannot express how excited I am for this game because I don't remember a time where we've added so many people all at once. And this game is going to be the showcase for all these new people. Like, you know, if any of you guys play Madden, this game is going to be like those times in Madden where you just save up all your coins and buy a whole bunch of players all at once. Like, who should I be excited for in this game? Should I be excited for Allen Robinson? Should I be excited for Anthony Miller? Should I be excited for Roquan Smith if he plays, if his contract situation gets resolved? Hopefully it will. But there's just too many people to be excited for, and that's why I'm just looking forward to this game you know, so much. And September 9th needs to get here you know, really fast. Okay, but let's analyze this game from a football perspective. And just looking only at the you know, the roster of the Packers and the Bears, when you analyze each position, analyze, you know, the depth at each position, analyze the quality of the talent, um, I really feel like the Bears overall have a better roster than the Packers. Now, obviously, Packers fans are going to come at me in the comment section, you know, raging, but they're going to see week one that we are not that far behind. In fact, I feel like our roster is actually better overall you know, than their roster. And the reason I say this is because, you know, just go position by position. The only position where the Packers really dominate us is that quarterback. And that's only because Aaron Rodgers is probably the greatest, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. And we have a really young, really raw quarterback and is only in his second year of, of playing in the NFL. So that's understandable. But if you look at every other position, like on offense, for example, I feel like the Bears receivers are better than the Packers. I feel like our running backs are way better than the Packers. Um, our tight ends and our O-line is comparable, at least. And, you know, when you look at defense, though, that's where you see a huge gap between us and the Packers. The Packers had a 22nd ranked defense last year, and we had a top 10 defense. We had the 10th overall defense. Now, we kept the same people. We kept we have continuity, you know, for next year. While the Packers, they have made over a lot of their defense. They have completely new, you know, starting quarter, cornerbacks. They have rookies starting at cornerback, which is not usually a good thing because they don't really know, you know, all the ins and outs of the NFL yet. So, you know, our defense is I feel like way better than the Packers. Like our linebacker play is way better. Our safeties are way better, and. You know, our defense is just, you know, over the top. Now, taking all this into consideration, we're still playing in Lambeau Field. So it's going to be an extremely tough game, even if we have an overall better roster than the Packers. And we still got to remember that Aaron Rodgers can always, you know, take the Packers um, over the top in any situation, really. But I feel like we're going to win this game. Like, it's going to be, everyone is going to be so pumped up. The Packers will not have film of us yet. And we're going to catch them by surprise. We're going to go in there. We're going to win game one to start the season 1-0. and So we move on to week two against the Seattle Seahawks, which is going to be another primetime game, Monday Night Football. So, you know, Matt Nagy has another opportunity to showcase his, his new team um, under, you know, the, the bright lights. And 
you know, I feel like the crowd is going to be going insane for this game. It's going to be our home opener, and if we actually beat the Packers like I'm predicting in week one, uh, you already know the crowd is going to be going insane. Um, so, you know, analyzing this game, I really feel like, again, the Bears have the better overall roster. Um, you know, the Legion of Boom is no more. Like, the Seahawks do not have any of the, really any of the, you know, players that made the Legion of Boom what it was. And... Their O-line is very suspect. Uh, their running game, you know, they added a good running back. I'm blanking on his name right now um, in the draft. But, you know, I feel like Russell Wilson is going to get killed behind that O-line. The defense isn't going to really be able to stop us. And I have us pulling another, pulling out another victory here, back-to-back victories um, to start out 2-0. So we're going to move on to week three against the Arizona Cardinals and the Mike Glennon revenge game. No, I'm just kidding, but uh, I think this game, um, we're going to see Josh Rosen, like, because obviously, you know, Sam Bradford, I think he's going to start the season, but you can never count on him being healthy, so I think at this point, Josh Rosen is going to be starting, and we're going to face off against him, against a rookie quarterback, and as we as Bears fans saw last year, you know, rookie quarterbacks make a lot of mistakes, so I feel like our defense is really going to feast on Josh Rosen's mistakes this game we're gonna force some turnovers and you know um I feel like this is also a game where our offense is actually gonna you know take some life um even though I have us winning the first two games I feel like it's gonna be because of our defense that we're gonna win our first two games but I feel like this game is actually gonna be won by our offense and we're gonna finally start to gel and we're actually gonna start the season three and oh believe it or not so we go to week four against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and we've had some struggles against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in recent years. Like, you go to last year, years prior, um, this Buccaneers game has not been good to us, and I'm actually thinking that will continue here. And that's partly because I have a starting 3-0, and so I can't just have a starting 4-0. and That seems kind of unrealistic. But this is also going to be Jameis Winston's first game back from his suspension, so the team is probably going to be a little bit more fired up. Um, you know, they, they've added a lot of people to their D-line. They've added talent at, you know, pass rusher, whatever. And I feel like they're going to pull out a win here. We're going to be, you know, a little bit maybe too arrogant at this point because we're 3-0 and we don't really know how that feels. So this game is going to take us back down to earth. And it's not going to be a bad loss, but I feel like we're going to lose this game and we're going to uh, go down to 3-1. and one. Week five, we have a bye, which kind of sucks because that's a super early bye and, you know, it's not a good time to, um, I'd rather have it later in the season, but it's whatever. So we go to week six, which is against the Miami Dolphins. And, you know, not many people are scared of the Miami Dolphins this year. Like, they didn't really have that good of a season last year. They traded away some of their best players for fifth round picks. So, um, you know, I don't see the Dolphins having a good season and, you know, adding Dowell Loganes is, you know, I don't think that's going to help them really. He didn't really do much for us. So, you know, I, I think the Dolphins have some good, you know, pieces to build around, uh, you know, like Minka Fitzpatrick and all. But I feel like we're going to win this game. I think our offense is really both sides of the ball. I think we're going to dominate. Um, and we're going to go in here and get a victory and go to 4-1. and one. Week 7, we got the Pats at home. Now, obviously, this is going to be a really tough game. And I don't really see us winning this game just because you know, we're going up against Tom Brady. We're going up against Bill Belichick. And not many teams have been able to defeat that combination uh, throughout their you know dominance in the league. And even though the Pats have lost a lot of people, and they're, I don't think they're going to go back to the Super Bowl this year, they're still going to be a very dominant regular season team. Uh, their schemes, their, you know, formations, whatever. Everything is just so complex about them. And uh, we still have a really young team. And being even though we're 4-1 at this point, I really feel like we're still maybe not ready yet to handle all the success. So we're maybe going to let up a little bit and not try our hardest, which, you know, I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but that's my opinion. And I have us losing this game against the Pats, which there's really no shame in losing against the Pats, even when you're, you know, especially when you're such a young team. And I'm going to have this loss dropping us down to 4-2. and two. Week 8, we have back-to-back home games against AFC East teams. This time we're facing off against the Jets. 
And I actually really like the Jets roster. I feel like in a couple of years, they're going to be a really good team to reckon with, especially when the Patriots dynasty is over. I really like Jamal Adams, especially. I kind of, I was really hoping the Bears would draft him in that, you know, the draft two years ago when we took Trubisky and said, but obviously I'm happy we got Trubisky now. But, you know, overall, the Jets have a good roster, but it's really young and it's it has a lot of holes in it. And I feel like at this point, Sam Darnold is going to be starting. Uh, Josh McCown is a very good, very good veteran quarterback, but he's not going to win you that many games, I feel like. And Jets fans are going to be screaming for Sam Darnold, and so he's going to start. And maybe this could be the you know his first start in the NFL. You never know. So if we're facing off against Sam Darnold, again, you know, rookie quarterbacks make a lot of mistakes, and we have a you know a, a top defense, I think. And so we're going to fe- feast off of his mistakes and force some turnovers, uh, limit you know, any touchdowns, limit yards in general. And I have us winning this game pretty easily to, go, to give us uh, a record of 5-2 and two at this point. Week 9, we have yet another AFC East team, our fourth in a row we're going to be facing, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. Uh, so we're going to be in Buffalo against the Buffalo Bills. And... There's a good chance that we're going to be facing another rookie quarterback in Josh Allen here. Now, as I said, as I've, I've kept on saying, you know, rookie quarterbacks make a lot of mistakes. And, you know, our defense, I feel like, is going to feast on them. And overall, I feel like the Bills, uh, they definitely have talent on both sides of the ball. You know, LaShawn McCoy is still that man. They have a pretty solid defense. And... You know, it's going to be, I think this is going to be actually a pretty close game. You know, maybe Bears fans, if we're 6-2, and two, they're going to be expecting, oh, we're going to go in here and dominate. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it's going to be a close, hard-fought game. But at the end, I still think the Bears are going to pull out this victory, moving us to 6-2. and two. Week 10, we're back at home to face off against the Detroit Lions, our second divisional opponents, our divisional game of the year. And it's going to be our first against these new look uh, Matt Patricia led Lions. So we've struggled against the Lions in recent years. But to be honest, you know, we've struggled against every single divisional opponent in recent years. So that's not really saying much. But, you know, I don't really know like what Matt Patricia is going to be like as a head coach. To be honest, I really thought that there are better options out there for the Lions to hire. But, you know, we'll see how it works out. It could end up working out, could not end up working out. But this is definitely a roster that's capable of making the playoffs. You know, they have established veterans on both sides of the ball. Their defense is pretty solid. They have a really good passing attack. They still lack a good running game, which Matt Patricia may or may not help um, make better. But I still feel like even if he's there, they still lack the talent at running back to make it, you know, a very solid running game. So for all these reasons, I, I have the Bears winning this game. I think that the lack of the Lions running attack is going to make, you know, our defense, it's going to make defense, playing defense against them way easier. And maybe Matt Stafford throws a pick, pick or two here or there. And I I think our offense at this point, if Trubisky is developing well, as I'm hoping he will, I think our offense is going to be really solid at this point. I think it's going to be very explosive. It's going to have a lot of new, you know, a new, um, you know, new schemes, everything. So I have us winning this game against the Lions, you know, finally winning games against divisional opponents. And we're going to be 7-2. and two. Week 11, we're still at home, and this time we're facing off against the Minnesota Vikings for our first game against the Vikings of the season. And, you know, look, obviously the Vikings have a much better roster overall than the Bears do. I mean, they went to the NFC Championship game last year. They didn't really lose anybody. I mean, in fact, I feel like the roster actually got better. Um, their quarterback play was already superb, but they added, you know, Kirk Cousins, who is a top top 10 quarterback in the league. And they still, their defense is still dominant. In fact, they added, you know, Sheldon Richardson. They added Mike Hughes, which is, he was a very good pickup in the draft. So overall, I feel like this Vikings roster is probably one of the best in the NFL on paper, that is. Now, it could be, it could go wrong, you know, if the Kirk Cousins experiment doesn't work out, which I hope that happens, but it's not looking likely. I think it's, it's going to be a good fit. So I have the Vikings winning this game. I think they're, 
they're ahead of us at this point. Like we're still a very young team. They're full of veterans. They're ready to win now. So I have the Vikings winning this probably in dominant fashion. And we're going to drop down to seven and three. Week 12, we're back at it again with the Lions, this time in Detroit. And this is going to be the Thanksgiving game, which I am really pumped for. Like, I'm just surprised that, you know, the Bears are getting all these primetime games now, when last year, obviously, we didn't have anyone. So it's obviously obviously a sign that the NFL thinks we're doing something right here. Now, this game, it's going to be a fun game to watch. It's going to be Thanksgiving, you know, both players, will, both uh, teams, sorry, will be fired up and... Uh, look, we, I already had us winning our first game against the Lions, and I don't think we're going to be winning more than one game against each team in this division just because the teams are so good. Like, the Packers are a good team. The Lions are a very good team. The Vikings are an extremely good team. So, you know, I have us losing this game in Detroit. It's going to be a tough one. It's probably going to be a close loss, but I still have us losing this to sadly give us a Turkey Day L. But it's still fine because we're still 7-4. and four. So it's week 13 now. It's freezing cold probably. It's December now. And, you know, we're 7-4. and four, And now we go off to face the New York Giants. Now, the Giants are... They're kind of a strange team right now because I feel like they're trying to win now. But I don't think they have all the pieces necessary to win now. I think their quarterback play is not going to be uh, as good anymore. I think Eli Manning is on a decline. You know, they added Saquon Barkley in the draft, who he's pro- I think he's going to easily be Rookie of the Year. He's going to get so many touches. He's going to be you know, very electrifying. He's one of the best players I've ever seen come out of the draft. So it's going to be really tough to game plan for him. And you know, overall, I think this might actually be a you know, pretty high-scoring game. Um, it could be back and forth. I think that both teams have some dynamic players now. They both have pretty solid defenses too, though. But I feel like our defense is... Definitely better than the Giants um, have. And I have us actually winning winning against the Giants. I think that, you know, it's week 13 now, so our offense is going to be clicking. Our defense is going to be solid. And we're going to be, you know, going in there and getting a win. And we're going to go out being 8-4. and four. Week 14, we're back at home to face off against probably the toughest opponent of the entire year. You know, the Los Angeles Rams, they have added so many, so many new people and they already had a good roster. I mean, they added freaking Adamic and Sue. They added Brandon Cooks. They added Marcus Peters. You know, it's insane how what they were able to do this past offseason. Now, they definitely have the most stacked roster on paper. But this is the NFL. Like, just having the most stacked roster doesn't guarantee Ws for you. Like, it's it's more than that. It's about the coaching. It's about the schemes. It's about how players fit, you know, the chemistry with each other. So there's definitely a chance this Rams experiment doesn't go well, but I think it definitely will. Like they just have too much talent to be a bad team. They'll definitely be 12 and 4. I think they might be 13-3, maybe 14-2. They're going to have a really good record. But like I said again, this is the NFL and crazy stuff happens every single year. The Rams are definitely going to lose to a team that they didn't expect to lose to. I mean, it happens all the time. And I feel like that loss is going to be going is going to be coming against our Chicago Bears. Yeah, that's right. Our young, hungry Chicago Bears, they're going to go into Soldier Field and they're going to steal a W from the best team in the NFL at this point to move to 9-4 and four with three weeks left. This is probably going to be my most controversial pick of this entire you know prediction, and I'm fine with that. But our Bears are definitely going to beat a team that they're not supposed to beat. And I think this is going to be the one, even though it's going to be really tough. I think we're going to pull out a very close nail-biting victory, you know, to give our fans such an amazing early, very early Christmas present. But yeah, we're going to win this. We're going to go to 9-4 and four with three weeks left. Week 15, we got the Green Bay Packers at home for a second game against the Packers of the season. And, you know, we're going to be, if we're 9-4 and four at this point, I think this might be a playoff clinching game like if we win this game and we go to 10 and 4 you know potentially we could clinch maybe a wild card berth at least which um that would be absolutely nuts and Chicago would go insane if that happened I think already if we're 9 and 4 at this point already Chicago will have gone insane like people are going to be skipping work people are going to be partying all the time just because we have not seen this level of success like in such a long time but um like I said earlier I think that the Packers I think that the Bears, sorry, have a better overall team than the Packers. 
um, you know, talent wise at least. But the Packers still have Aaron Rodgers, and Aaron Rodgers is just such a such a good player. Like it's it's impossible sometimes to plan for the stuff that he does. And I feel like this might be a game, sadly, where he just where he just dominates us. I think that you know he's going to be very angry. Maybe the Packers are fighting for a playoff spot too at this point. They probably, I mean, they probably are going to be fighting for a playoff spot. Let's be real. But um, yeah, I have us losing this game to drop to nine and five, which I know it sucks. We're not going to clinch the playoffs yet. But you know, the Packers have a very very good quarterback, and when you have a very very good quarterback. You know, you can win games. So I have us losing this game to drop to 9-5. and five. Week 16, we're off to San Francisco to face off against the 49ers. Now, again, we're 9-5 and five at this point, so maybe we just need one more win to clinch the playoffs. And that, that win is going to be so hard to get because it always is. And, you know, this is going to be a good game. I think that Trubisky versus Garoppolo is going to be a very fun matchup to watch. You know, both teams are kind of young. Both teams have some good talent. So it's it's going to be a very, very entertaining game. Now, I think that maybe the 49ers are a little bit, they might be a little bit ahead of us in certain aspects. Like, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo, he's definitely older than Trubisky. He might, I think he's more um, more likely to have a, a good good breakout because, you know, he's had a lot of years in the NFL at this point. And overall, I think that the 49ers, they're going to pull out this victory Sadly, and we're going to drop to 9-6. and six. All right, we got the final week, week 17, uh, to close out the regular season against the Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota. So we're 9-6 and six now, and I think that this is a, if we want to make the playoffs, this is a must win. I don't see any shot at a 9-17 and 17 making the playoffs this year just because of how stacked the NFC is. So I, we have to get to at least 10 wins to make the playoffs. And so this this game then becomes a must win for us, and you know there's there's gonna be a ton of pressure on Trubisky on everyone else in this game, and it's gonna be you know it's gonna be tough. Even though I feel like the Vikings at this point, you know they they might not be playing as hard because they already maybe have have clinched the number one seed or whatever seed you know they want. So maybe some starters are not gonna be playing. You know hopefully so, and. Just for all those reasons, I think that we're actually going to go in here and get a win in Minnesota. Yeah, that's right. We're going to be 500 against the division. We're going to steal a win here and, um, you know, luckily get this win to hopefully, you know, get a playoff berth. And, you know, I I hope 10 and 6 is enough. I think it might be. But, you know, we're going to get this win. We're going to have a winning season for the first time in, you know, since the Lovey Smith era. And it's going to be an amazing way to end the regular season. Alright guys, that's going to wrap up the video. I know I said I'd do a season's award prediction at the end of this video. But I'm actually going to save that for a separate video. Because this video turned out to be way longer than I thought it would be. But yeah, be on the lookout for that video. And you know, overall, let me know what you, what you guys think about my predictions. Let me know if you agree, if you disagree. Let me know what you think our record is going to be. Let me know what type of season you think the Bears are going to have. And you know... No matter what happens, I think this is going to be one of the most fun seasons we've ever seen. You know, at least in recent memory, you know, going back to the John Fox days, the, the freaking um, Mark Trussman days. I really think Matt Nagy is going to inject some new life into these Bears. And we're going to see this, this type of football that we've never seen before. And it's going to be so fun. We're going to win some games. We're going to have fun. 10-6. and six, Let's get it.